Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob. Uh, let's turn your King James Bible. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 57. Uh, this is going to be on, I guess you could say, the, the stumbling block. So let's take a look. We're going to do a commentary on Isaiah 57. Found something kind of interesting. All right, verse 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. In other words, well, we all die. But the thing is, a lot of times it's the wicked people, the evil ones killing the righteous. And God has a lot to say about mercy. In uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. In Matthew 23, 23, Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. In other words, they majored on the minor things, and they minored on the major things. Yeah, they, they worried about tithing, but the important things they totally neglected. Now just remember, those in Christ, uh, in Hebrews 4.16 we read, Let us therefore come boldly, boldly unto the throne of grace. Not the throne of law, no. The throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. In James chapter 2 and 13, For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy. You see, so in other words, people that don't show any mercy, they're in big trouble, because they're not going to have any mercy when it comes from God. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. In Jude, chapter 1 and verse 21, we read, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. All right, let's go back to Isaiah, chapter 57. So, the thing is, the righteous are killed by the evil ones. And then we read, well, let's read it again. Chapter 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Oh yeah, God's... Uh, the evil to come is God's judgment, people. But verse 2, speaking of the righteous, He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. But draw near hither. Oh, here the, the subject's changing now from the righteous to the wicked. But draw near hither. Ye sons of the sorceress. Ooh. Here we have the children of the witches, the sorceress. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Um, is that just a spiritual thing, or is it a physical thing, or is it both? Verse 4, against whom do ye sport yourselves? 
In other words, they think going against God is a game. You know, that's what sports are, right? Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? In other words, people, they're sticking their tongue out at God. Don't people stick their tongues out? You know, when, when you were in elementary school and you were mad at somebody, you'd stick your tongue out? I know I did. Maybe you didn't, but I did. You know, that's what they're talking about. Draw out the tongue. Uh, take a look at the pictures. Miley Cyrus, the Rolling Stones. They stick out their tongue against God. Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? So they're the, the children of basically liars. Verse 5. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Why are they saying slaying the children in the valleys? Well, this had reference to uh, Satan worship, which uh, they used to pass their children through the flame of Moloch. And, uh, you know, they still do this stuff today. You know, in Georgia, I forget what year it was, there was a uh, Georgia State House of Representatives member, a woman, I forget her name, she died, and her husband died. Uh, she started doing an investigation on a bunch of children that were taken into state, coveti, com, uh, state custody, and it was an average of uh, two children a day, on average, in the state of Georgia, taken into state custody in one year, and they vanished. I mean, there was more than two children a day taken into state custody, but there was like 700 and something kids that disappeared from the system. And she started to do an investigation, and then her and her husband uh, conveniently committed suicide. Yeah. Uh, it was like, I don't know what they call it in Georgia, but they call it different places, Child Protective Services, Child Protective Services, uh, Oh, I don't know. But uh, she ended up, her and her husband committed suicide. Uh, maybe they uh, had something on the Clintons. What do you think? All right, so here we go. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They... They are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Now, they're, they're doing these drink offerings and meat offerings to the devil. And God says, should I receive comfort in these? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Yeah, they're, you know, you're talking Satanism here. Even thither winnest thou up to offer sacrifice. Behind the doors also and the post hast thou set up thy remembrance. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me. Oh yeah, they're, they're not doing this for the Lord. They're doing it for another. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them, not with the Lord, with them, thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. Uh, a bed of adulteries, you know. Verse 9, And thou wentest to the king with ointment. Which king? Not the king of kings, not the lord of lords. Another king, perhaps the king of this world or the prince of this world. And didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. 
Do you know what it means to debase yourself? Well, let's take a look at Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You know, the more I study this dictionary, the more respect I have for it. Um, the guy was a linguist, which is a language scholar, okay? The guy knew Hebrew, which is the language of the Old Testament. He knew Greek, which was the language of the New Testament. He knew Latin, uh, if I remember correctly, French, Italian. Uh, guy knew, from what I understand, he knew 20 languages. He knew all the words, uh, not only where they came from, but their root meanings. And he was a believer, he was truly a believer. And when you look up a Bible word that you don't know, like propitiation, there it is in the definitions. And he gives you a scriptural reference to it from the Bible. Uh, so what does debase mean? It's a transitive verb. It means to reduce from a higher to a lower state or rank in estimation. The drunkard debases himself and his character. Intemperance and debauchery. Debase men almost to a level with beast. To reduce or lower in quality, purity, or value. To adulterate as to debase gold or silver by alloy. In other words, you're taking gold or silver and throwing in a non-precious metal. To lower or degrade, to make mean or despicable. Religion should not be debased by frivial, frivolous disputes. Vicious habits debase the mind as well as the character to sink in purity or elegance. Um, I think uh, to debase style by the use of vulgar words. Wow. So... Verse 9, Isaiah 57, verse 9. And didst debase thyself even unto hell. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet sayest thou not. There is no hope. Thou hast found the, li thou hast found the life of thine hand. Therefore thou wast not grieved. In other words, there was no repentance. There was nothing. They, they didn't even consider what they were doing was wrong. Verse 11. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared? Huh. Doesn't the Bible declare that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge? Oh, yeah. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared? that thou hast lied and hast not remembered me and hast not remembered me. See, they don't have any mem they don't try to remember the Lord, nor laid it to thy heart. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not? I will declare thy righteousness. Uh, <laughs> remember, Jesus said that except your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, that um, you ain't going to make it. Well, that's, that's the Bob uh, translation. That's the Bob paraphrase version. I will declare thy righteousness and thy works. Ooh. For they shall not profit thee. When thou criest, in other words, when God sends judgment, when thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee. Uh, they're talking about bands of soldiers here, you know, companies of soldiers. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. You know that word wind in the, uh, in the Hebrew and the Greek has similar meanings. Sometimes the word wind is translated as breath, as in when God breathed the breath of life into Adam and he became a living soul. But when you look in the Greek, it comes from the word pneuma, 
and that's where we get the word pneumatic tools, air tools. But sometimes that word wind is translated as spirit, as in the Holy Spirit. But the wind shall carry them all away. Carry them away to where? Probably hell. Vanity shall take them. You know what it means to be vain? It means worth something worthless. Vanity shall take them. But he that putteth his trust in me, those that put their trust in the Lord, shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Well, what does the Bible say about stumbling blocks? And this is going to tie into the next study, too. In Leviticus 19.14, Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind. Now, what's a stumbling block? Well, if you're blind, it's a stone to trip over and fall down. Spiritually, it is something that the Lord doesn't like you to do, and it will bring judgment. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear the Lord, but shall fear thy God, I am the Lord. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign. Oh yeah, the Jews are were always... Uh, asking Jesus to give him a sign from heaven. I mean, Jesus did so many miracles, and the Jews would ask him, oh, give us a sign. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Uh, Plato, anybody? Aristotle? Verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. All right, let's skip over to uh, Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, Write, these things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Now, this is Christ. Remember, the Bible says that the, the word of God is sharper than two, any two-edged sword? Oh, yeah. Verse 13, I know, thy, I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. Boy, is that a rough neighborhood or what? Even where Satan's seed is. And if you don't know where Pergamos is today, it's in um, a country called Turkey. However, before the Muslims invaded Turkey, uh, invaded it and conquered it and called it Turkey, it was called Greece. Yeah, the uh, Muslims went in, conquered that part of Greece, and uh, renamed it Turkey. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Huh, I wonder if Satan dwells in Turkey today. Verse 14, But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Now Balaam was a false was a was a prophet of God, but uh, 
he loved money more than he loved the Lord, I guess. So, because Balak paid him a lot of money and says, how can I defeat Israel and get God to curse them? Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, the king, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block, something for Israel to trip over people, spiritually anyways, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Ah, so they sacrificed things unto Satan, and they got the children of Israel to eat them, and uh, they taught them to... All right, so they were eating things sacrificed unto devils, and he taught them uh, to commit fornication with the Canaanite women. And I'm sure the women were committing the same with the Canaanite men. Uh, I, you know, so that's how that works. But uh, it didn't work out too good for Israel. So let's go back to Isaiah 57. Verse 14. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. Do you know God inhabits eternity? Whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. God wants us to be humble people, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever. In other words, God's not going to put up with us forever. Eh, ain't going to happen. There's going to come a day of wrath. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. God's not going to always be angry. One day he's going to burn the whole mess up and things are going to get better for, for those that love him. Neither will I be always wroth, for the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. God made the souls. Read Genesis 1 and Chapters 1 and 2. For the, iniqui for the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hid me and was wroth. And he went on frowardly in the way of his heart. You ever hear people say, oh, follow your heart. Follow your heart. In Jeremiah 17, 9, we read, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And the answer is God. And that's scary. God knows our hearts. That's, that's scary. I hid me. In other words, God hides himself from the wicked. I hid me and was wroth. He was angry. And he, the evil one, and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. Now, if when we turn from our wickedness, God will heal us. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace. Peace to him that is far off, and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. And that's only for those that love the Lord. But verse 20, but the wicked, but the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. 
In Matthew 10, 34, Jesus said, Think not, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. We're talking about earth. We're not talking about heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. There's going to be war on earth, people. There's war on earth now, and there's going to be a big final war in the future. Now, in Hebrews 12, 14, we read, Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, where does our holiness come from? Our faith in Christ, not the works of our hands. Now, if you have faith in Christ, and I know I've said this a million times probably, if you're a hit man for the mafia, find another job if you believe in Christ, you know. But, uh, you know, our holiness comes from Christ. But uh, you should be led of the Spirit. All right, so let's get ready to close this out. Oh, boy, I know I've beat this horse to death, but let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, Jesus, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, well, this is a lawyer, a doctor of the law, and he's trying to trick Jesus. But he says in verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? In other words, what's the most important of the Ten Commandments. Verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, on these two commandments hang all the law, all the law, and the prophets. Guess what, people? Not circumcision, not keeping the Sabbath. Uh, you know, Jesus said, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And of course, you have to believe in Christ. I mean, you know, that's a very important thing too. So, well, in John 3, Chapter 3 and verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath e everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Oh yeah. Now, to close everything out, Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. And people will tell you, oh, well, you know, we can't believe the words of Paul because after all, he changed the law. No, he didn't. Christ changed the law. Jesus changed the law. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor as thyself. And hopefully you don't live next door to a bunch of Satanists. I think it would be a good idea to move. But that's just me. Galatians 5.14, and we're going to close this out. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this. Now, he, Paul's talking to believers here. People that already believe in Christ. People that love the Lord. Okay? For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He's quoting Jesus. Okay? But if ye bite and devour one another... Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Good advice. But people will tell you that, oh, this is fake. There's a big push now among the Noahides that will tell you that all this is garbage. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these things are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, 
ye are not under the law. Remember, Jesus said, love the Lord, love thy neighbor. That hangs all the law and the prophets, hangs on those two things and believing on the Son. Remember that. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Sounds like television, doesn't it? 21. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because they're not being led of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Faith in what? Faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who God the Father sent for us. Verse 23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affliction, I'm sorry, and the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. There you have it, people. That is my commentary on the book of Ezekiel. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and um, the Son of God, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.